Thank you all very kindly for coming out today. Myself, I'm feeling a little poorly and under the weather. I have indulged in a number of drugs prior to this to help me remain perky during this debate. I'm very much interested in the pharmaceutical advancements of marijuana that may be snorted and inhaled. As I've switched myself personally from laudanum to marijuana for various woman's problems, and being a thorough woman of this century, I do endorse that many people out here do require marijuana for various states of good or bad health. And so, I hope, like myself, you're very interested in hearing what these people have to say. But I do warn you, no heckling, because I shall be very firm and definitely not amused with any out-of-line behaviour. I'm feeling quite miserable. I apologise. Um, we'll be running several short videos after the um, people have said their things. Um, but I'd like to introduce them first of all. Um, on the side which is speaking about the harms of marijuana, I'd like to introduce Dr. Gavin Cape, Cope, who is um, from Community Alcohol and Drug Services, um, Police Constable Julian Reel, who is the North East Valley Community Policing Officer, and our very own Matthew Peppercorn, who is a registered mental health nurse. On the side speaking around marijuana benefits, I'd like to introduce Dr. Jeff Noller, an independent researcher, um, Abe Gray from Normal, and Simon, a medical marijuana user. Okay. At the end of the debate, we will have a show of hands to decide the winning debating side, because we thought we didn't want this to be like test cricket and go on and have no result. <coughs> this cannabis debate has been designed to neither condemn nor condone the use of cannabis. Instead, it's designed to allow people to make an informed and autonomous decision on the use of cannabis. Abstinence lobbyists will firmly advocate that no one should ever smoke cannabis, but in reality it is a plant that grows freely as a weed across New Zealand and has been used by 52% of the local population. This appears to indicate that this abstinence stance is far from reality. Without further ado, let the debate begin. Quite good, yes, thank you. <laughs> Okay, looks like I'm first up and I'm going to be talking a little bit about the health harms. As you will probably see, as in most debates, the lines between the debaters become rather blurred and that's not just no longer. Okay, first of all I th think that uh, this debate is basically about the costs and benefits of prohibition versus liberalising the laws. So I want you to bear that in mind as I try and summarise some of the health issues relating to cannabis. And I do prefer the term cannabis as opposed to marijuana. Um, there was a very recent study carried out in the UK uh, which got some publicity in many of the national papers here and overseas. And it was led by uh, Professor Nutt who has uh, got a very good reputation for speaking out about drug issues. And as you see in this chart, alcohol is the number one harm to others and harm to self, beats all the others into a cocked hat. Where does cannabis sit? Well, number eight. So it's still in the chart, and this is considering all sorts of modalities and all sorts of criteria about the overall harms of all these drugs as you see there. So, I'll go into some of the health harms. I guess when someone has a smoke of marijuana, one of the things that they might experience is... I've got a different... <coughs> Irritation at the back of the throat. There you go. A slight cough. And in fact, that cough can go on and on, as I will show you in the chronic harms. There's also a likelihood in naive users of increasing your heart rate by around about 20 beats per minute, although regular users do get tolerant to that. There is a bit of a worry 
in the short term that if you have ischemic heart disease that you're four times more likely to have a myocardial infarction after having smoked cannabis in the hour afterwards. There is also some people describe as uh, having a paranoid or anxiety attack. Um, and here we have uh, Paul McGann again, just demonstrating. Will you shut up for good sake? You're giving me the fear. Give me a dollar, David. My brain's capsized. I've got to fuck my brain. Change down, man. Find your neutral space. If you've got a rush, it will pass. Please do. Very sage advice there, usually very transient, uh, but something to bear in mind. For any policy makers here, I'd have to say one of the big issues, if the law was to change, would be driving under the influence of cannabis. Uh, the evidence for uh, driving, increase in driving accidents is becoming stronger and stronger. The evidence for its direct culpability in uh, road traffic deaths isn't so strong. And for example, one very large study done in France where they tried to look at the culpability of cannabis, they had alcohol of 29% be direct cause of fatal car accidents and cannabis about 2.5%. So a much lower level, but probably it is still very significant. That's going to be a very hard one for policy people. Another danger, I'd have to say, the acute harms would be a prenatal exposure. So that's the mother smoking cannabis on a regular basis, I'd have to say. And there is a possibility, only a possibility, that it may, by the age of three, um, there be cognitive deficits evident. One more minute. And by the age of ten, behavioural disorders. One more minute. Here we go. Here's the chronic harms here. Dependence, I'd have to say, will be number one. About the third commonest category of people coming to the community alcohol and drug service is can I have some help in coming off cannabis because I smoke it too much and I've lost control of it. Respiratory and cardiovascular impairment, it makes absolute sense if you're going to smoke a particulate matter, it doesn't matter what it is, you're going to impair your respiration. There is a possibility of increasing cancers as similar, but not quite the same as for tobacco. Conflicting evidence for educational... Conflicting evidence for educational impairment, uh, I th very conflicting evidence. There is perhaps a trend towards the earlier the onset of cannabis use. There is a possibility in increasing of vulnerability. Same for mental health. I have to say the evidence is not strong for either, but there is a trend towards that evidence coming out. And last but not least, I'm actually not necessarily pro-reform, because one of the reasons is Prohibition hasn't really deterred use, and if we chuck more resources at it, we might never get it back together again. And that's me. Thank you, Queen. I am not amused. <laughs>